Sheriff. Wow, Eagle County, this is incredible. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you all for your service, your sacrifice, and making this possible. Sheriff, that was a beautiful introduction, and I hope to make you proud, just like you are making each and every person here proud, serving your county. Thank you. We even had the Patriots of Pueblo County show up today. <laughs> Eagle County, you drew in a crowd. This is incredible. You know, yesterday was a day of remembrance, a pivotal moment in our country where we weren't talking about kneeling for the flag, we weren't talking about when and when you shouldn't stand, but it was a moment where America stood together in unity. And I was reflecting on that, and I was just thinking of the patriotism that came from that. We all suffered together, and at the same time, we all grabbed onto each other and said, we are gonna come out of this stronger, than ever. We are going to come out of this together. The Statue of Liberty started shaking her fist that day. That was a powerful moment of unity. Just a few years later, on September 11th, we had four soldiers <coughs> who were serving, continuing to serve in Benghazi. They lost their lives there. And we have four of them still telling that story of their sacrifice, how they had missiles coming their way, and they would do everything that they could to defend America while they were waiting on help, while they could defend those that are around them. And I heard one of those brave men, Mark Geis, they call him Oz, he said, there were six of us on the rooftop but as I saw missiles coming our way and take a 90 degree turn, I knew that there was a seventh man there that night. Jesus, the Lord God Almighty was there protecting them. And he's here with us today. God is doing something great in our country. He is moving all throughout our country and I want you to know that it is tangible. We travel and we meet with people just like you. And I want you to know everything that you do, every call that you make, every conversation that you have with someone, every time you speak up about how important this voting cycle is going to be, you're not just doing it for your neighbors or your community, your state or your country. You are sowing into the very kingdom of God and we are going to reap a harvest like no one has ever seen before. Your services, your sacrifices, they are not in vain. We've all reached a point where we're fed up with politicians. They go to D.C., they forget who they work for. They overregulate, overtax, overspend, and ultimately destroy everything that we are building here at home. I got involved because I saw people on the left who want to take everything from us. They want to make our lives difficult and complex, and they want us to put our trust in them while they take our liberties, our freedom, our rights. As a virus has shown us, they want to take away small businesses, the lifeline of our country, the heartbeat of America. They want to tell you where you can shop, when you can shop there, at what time of day, how old you have to be at that time to be there, and certainly what you have to wear. It's not the proper role of government. The role of government is to inform us of the risk and then let us decide. Yes. Let yes. us choose yes. what we're going to yes. do. Yes. For instance, I know darn well, I've been told my whole life, the risks of eating raw cookie dough. <laughs> and I never want government to come in and tell me what I could do with my cookie dough. That is not the proper role. I know the risk. And I'll take it. <laughs> this has gone so far. And there are so many people who the left is losing. They're losing their own. They're losing the center. Because they see the lawlessness, the chaos, and the destruction that's coming from their party. When their platform 
is defunding, dismantling, disbanding our police officers, that's un-American, and that's not something that we will tolerate. That's not something that we will stand for. We stand for our law enforcement officers. We pray for them. Yeah. They put their lives on the line for us each and every day. Yeah. There are a lot of people who've never known how limiting it is to depend on government, but they're starting to see it now when government has just too much control. We the governed, we the people, we give consent to be governed. And there are some things that we're not putting up with anymore. Government has power because of us. Yes. Their power is derived from we the people. And we the people, we don't get our rights from government. We don't even get it from the Constitution. We get our rights from God Almighty. Yeah. I know firsthand what it's like to depend on government. It's not the American dream. My mom believed the lies that she was told. She believed the only way to successfully take care of her five children was through government assistance. I know what it's like to depend on government for food and housing and health care. I know that my mom made sacrifices that she wouldn't have to if she had somebody telling her, you can do it. She suppressed gifts and talents that are on the inside of her for her children because someone told her, this is how you do it. And we were limited. We were stuck in a cycle of poverty with no incentive to ever get out. We've stood in those lines for bread and cheese. When we moved from a rough area in Denver to the western slope of Colorado, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to us. We started to experience community like never before. For the first time in our lives, we had neighbors that said hello. I got my first job at the Rifle McDonald's. <laughs> I'm so grateful for the owners of that establishment who invested in me. As a young teenager with no skills, hardly any availability, not knowing the outcome of their investment, they took a risk and hired me. And I developed a job sk skill. I developed work ethics. And I still remember bringing mom home that first check. That paycheck had pride connected to it. Empowerment. I began to develop personal responsibility. And I saw from a very young age that I could do a better job taking care of myself than government ever could. Yeah, yeah. My mom's here today, and I want you to know she is my best friend. She is my hero. She is everything that I've always wanted to be. That might be why I have four boys, because after me, she had four boys. I love my mom so much, and she later learned that she could put her hand to something and be successful. My mom became a business owner and ran a successful business and influenced a community. Yay, mom. I took that same grit and determination, that freedom, that personal responsibility, that independent living to women at the Garfield County Jail. And for seven years, I counseled at-risk women. These women were at the lowest points in their life. Most had lost hope for a prosperous future, for a powerful future. But I was able to bring them hope. And not just any hope, but a favorable confident expectation that they didn't have to live bound by their past mistakes but if they allowed God to get in the middle of that he could restore whatever their past looked like for a glorious and impactful future as a business owner I now know what it's like to take risks on people and I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to do that I know when times get tough you don't quit you get tougher when we opened our restaurant in Rifle, Colorado, we were just a Western-themed restaurant. We wanted to give back to our community. Those women that I counseled in the jail, I had an opportunity to bring them into my home and live with my family. And now through my business, I was able to offer them jobs, create opportunities for them to put their hand to something and be in charge of their future. 
Shortly after we opened our restaurant, there was an altercation where a man was brutally beat to death outside my restaurant. It immediately prompted the question in me, how will I defend my people? How will I protect those around me? That's when I took advantage of Colorado's open carry laws. You! Yeah. I began to open carry in my restaurant, and shortly after that, my waitresses began to carry. And then the next thing you know, Nightline 2020 was in our store calling Shooter's Grill the safest restaurant in America. Shooter's Grill has given me a platform for the Second Amendment, but through that, an advocacy for freedom was born. I began to read and study the Constitution, and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the vision our founding fathers were divinely inspired to have for our country. And I saw how far away we were drifting from that. As a mom of four boys, I want them to live the American dream. I want them to have every opportunity and more than I had. That's what we all want yeah. for these children that are coming up. And I'm sure that you are all feeling the same pressure that I feel as a mom. I feel that there is a mandate on my life to secure the nation I'm sending my boys out to. And I refuse to send them into AOC's socialist nation. Yeah. 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 This is me stepping up to do my part to serve my country to protect freedom for generations to come. President Ronald Reagan said that freedom is never more than one generation away from being extinct. And that's where we're at right now. I want the American dream to remain. I want it to be strong and alive for generations to come. America is an exceptional country because we secure the rights of the individual, not a group or a class or a race. The individual is the most vulnerable mm -hmm. in our nation. And that's what makes us the greatest nation this world has ever known. In America, you can be anything. You can do anything. There are no limits. I went from standing in line for government cheese to receiving an invitation from the White House to watch the President of the United States give an acceptance. <laughs> to secure for generations to come. Yes. We are seeing how important this election is. We always hear this is the most important election of our lifetime. No matter how many times someone said it about the election previous. This could be the last most important election that we ever have. Joe Biden has said that he wants to fundamentally transform America. The last person to say that was former President Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. And he had a great start. We have to stop that agenda and stand for righteousness. Freedom is on the ballot. America yeah. is on the ballot. Yeah. When I stepped up to run, I had no idea that we would have the support that we have. But you all showed us on the June 30th primary that you're through with DC politics as usual. Yeah, yeah. We won that primary by nearly 10 points. Yeah. And I have yeah. some folks telling me you need to stop talking about that primary. No. Absolutely not. This is your victory and I'm not taking that from you. Yeah. Yeah. We won by nearly 10 points. We were outspent 10 to 1 and it was the first time in 48 years here in Colorado that an incumbent was defeated in a primary. You spoke loud and clear that you want a leader with a strong message who isn't afraid to lay it all on the line and stand up for what's right. Last year, the Democrats forgot they were supposed to tiptoe around the Second Amendment. Someone forgot to hand Beto O'Rourke the playbook. <laughs> and from a presidential debate stage, Beto O'Rourke told all of us, hell yes, I'm going to take your AR-15s and your AK-47s. No. When he announced his visit to Aurora, Colorado, I didn't waste any time. I got in my car and drove three hours to his presidential rally with my Glock on my hip. And I looked him in the eye and I told him, hell no, you're not. And I did that because I didn't see anyone else doing it. I didn't see anyone standing for freedom. But I saw a whole lot of people giving our freedoms away. Yeah. I learned in that moment, I know to be right, 
I can affect and represent millions. Yep. Yeah, That's you. exactly what we're doing. That's what this momentum is all about. That's, this is a movement that we are a part of right now. Yep. Betty Oglesby takes care of my volunteers. <laughs> Woo, Betty! Yay! If you don't know Betty, you need to go and shake her hand. She just told me yesterday, last week our volunteers made 15,000 phone calls. Yeah! Woo! The primary victory wasn't anything special that I did. That was you. That was your hard work. This general election isn't going to be anything fancy the president does, Senator Cory Gardner does, or Lauren Boebert. It's going to be your hard work, you communicating this message. Never wait for permission. Right. The invitation may never come for you to share what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. There are tables with important conversations being had that you need to be a part of. Yep. There is a lost and hurt and dying world, yep. and they are searching for answers, and the answers are on the inside of each and every one of you. Yep. So I need you to be bold, and I need you to share what's in your heart. America depends on your message. Yes, it does. Right now, I'm up against a far-left socialist. In my district, she wants the $93 trillion Green New Deal. She's had a multi-year love fest with Bernie Sanders and his socialized medicine deal. She wants universal health care that would bankrupt small businesses immediately. No, no, no. Diane Mitch Bush has an ad out where she proudly brags that she's endorsed by Planned Parenthood. No. 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 I will always defend the sanctity of life. Life begins as it's at conception and as a congresswoman with the power of the purse i will always tell planned parenthood to go fund themselves that's right now i know that personal attacks are coming my way please know that i'm okay with that i know exactly what i signed up for I know that I'm what's in the way of their victory. I am the defender between you and overreaching government, that heavy hand of overreaching government that wants to come in, steal your land, steal your water, and destroy everything that you're building. I know that they're going to attack me personally because they cannot win on policy. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The Democrats don't like me. <laughs> the Democrats are terrified of the message that I'm bringing because we're telling them that not only do we need to elect President Donald Trump for four more years, but we also, yeah. we, will, we also need to reelect Senator Cory Gardner, yeah. keep the Senate. A vote against Senator Cory Gardner is a vote against President Trump. Yep. Of course, we're going to keep this congressional seat red. Yep. And I'm telling you, we are getting tremendous response down ticket. Mm -hmm. There are races doing far better than anyone ever imagined, and we are going to flip seats in Colorado. Yes. This movement is affecting the entire ballot. We have unaffiliated voters who are showing up to vote. National Popular Vote Compact is on the ballot. Yeah. Last year, I spent months gathering signatures, and out of the 229,000 signatures that were collected, I was the second largest signature gatherer in the state of Colorado. Yeah! Now we have the National Popular Vote Compact on the ballot. It was the first time since 1932, because of a grassroots, citizen-led effort, we are able to have an opportunity to repeal garbage legislation. The National Popular Vote Compact steals your votes for president and yep. gives them to California. Yep. It puts Colorado's resources at risk, yep. puts Colorado's water at risk, yep. and it allows people like Hillary Clinton to cheat their way into the presidency. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. People are showing up to vote this year like never before. Yeah. 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 That's why the Democrats hate the message that I'm bringing to you. And they know that I was supposed to be one of them. 
I was raised under their failed policies, we believed their lies, and we were stuck in their cycle of poverty. But glory to God, we broke out, and now we're bringing this message of freedom to everyone. Yeah! God bless you all. Thank you so much Woo! for being out here. We love you all. Got my vote. Me too. Oh boy, who's excited now?